Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about reform and revolution. No, this video isn't about Rosa Luxemburg's book, Social Reform or Revolution, but my own take on the subject. I will be talking about the German revolutions of 1918 and 1919, and the actions of the reformist Social Democratic Party, which was then led by Frederick Ebert. When Ebert was appointed Chancellor in November 1918, Germany was in upheaval. The navy had mutinied, all of Germany's monarchs had abdicated, and socialist revolutionaries had created worker and soldier councils across the country. To add to this, in January 1919, there was a massive general strike in Berlin, where workers seized government buildings. This was the Spartacus Uprising. In response, the Social Democratic government decided to use the Freikorps to crush the uprising basically allying with hard-right reactionaries against their former comrades. The result was that the revolution was crushed. Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht, the founders of the German Communist Party, were murdered, and Ebert later became president of the Weimar Republic. Now, since I call myself Democratic Socialist Zero One, I am often accused of being a Rosa Luxemburg killer. The truth is that I think Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht worker councils and soldier councils were more democratic than Ebert's parliamentary democracy, which was, ironically, dominated by anti-democratic right-wing institutions and capitalists. Germany became a republic. It had elected representatives, all the appearances of democracy. But beneath the surface, the old German system went on as before. The state officials of the Kaiser's Empire were the state officials of the new republic. The industrialists of the empire ran the industry of the republic. Even the same teachers presided over the same classrooms, preaching the same gospel of nationalism and German racial superiority. And above all, the general staff of the empire continued to function, even though secretly. The old Germany still lived. That is the weakness of reform in a nutshell. If Ebert had attempted to implement socialist policies, the reactionaries would have quickly removed him by force. Indeed, if the Communist Party had have won the election, I doubt the German writers' elites would have even allowed them to take office. So Ebert's democracy was a false democracy. Indeed, if Ebert had been true to the socialist cause, he would have sided with his former teacher, Rosa Luxemburg, in order to actually implement democratic socialism on a large scale, instead of siding with reactionaries who opposed most of his views. Let me give you an idea about the type of people Ebert sided with over his former leftist comrades. The soldiers were supported by the Freikorps, right-wing mercenaries paid for by the government. In Munich, there were cases where the Freikorps simply shot members of the Räterepublik out of hand. Other Freikorps members, like Fridolin von Spahn, heartily approved of the brutal measures which were being used to suppress the communist revolutionaries throughout Germany. Es klingt vielleicht sehr roh, aber ich konnte ihnen keine Tränen nachweinen. Es war der gerechte Lohn. Sie wollten Deutschland ins Chaos stürzen. Und ich zog daraus den Schluss, Man muss das bekämpfen. Und das habe ich dann getan, so gut ich konnte. Eugene Levine's father was the communist leader of the Räterepublik. He was executed in June 1919. I understand uh, from my mother that he had been very brave the way he met his death. And in fact, he called out, uh, long live the world revolution. And I realized that an honorable person would die sooner or later, either on the barricades or put up against a wall and shot. Eugene Levine's father was Jewish. And the anti-Semitic prejudice of those on the right was further fueled by the fact that of the leadership of the Räter Republik, most were Jewish. So that's natürlich in Deutschland Allmählich der Eindruck entstand, ja, Bolschewismus und Judentum ist dasselbe, so ungefähr. Dass sich allgemein eine anti-jüdische Stimmung verbreitet hat. Ebert relied on fascists and anti-Semites to defend his government. 
You have to wonder what would have happened if Ebert and the rest of the Social Democratic Party had supported the revolutions. Things may have turned out quite differently. In conclusion, whether it be the Weimar Republic or Chile in the 1970s, history shows that it is impossible to implement socialism through reform, especially when the right remains in control of most of the political institutions.